All right. I think we're off to the races. So, welcome to yet another Metalogix Quick Take, this time on the subject of Diagnostic Manager. Metalogix uh, Quick Takes, obviously, are the series wherein we take a quick subject, uh, like the perhaps the subject of a particular troubleshooting issue or an installation concept or some small tidbit of information, and we kind of expound on it for about 15 to 20 minutes and then open the floor to, to questions if there are any. Um, these are intended to be quick bite-sized um, 30 minute videos so we're going to kind of breeze through and today you are working with me Roy Martinez I'm the lead uh, currently the lead support representative for diagnostic manager uh, I also work in the pre-sales uh, division as well I've got quite a few years of experience working with this tool since its 1.0 release which means I've been able to see the tools uh, feature set and functionality grow over time, so I've kind of seen it all when it comes to DM. Uh, chances are many of you have probably worked with me before on your open support cases if you have them. So today we're talking about Diagnostic Manager and specifically uh, installing, and really we're going to touch a little bit on um, you know confirming installation of the DM Component Analysis Solution, an oft-utilized um, optional component that gives us information uh, deep dive information from our pages as well as uh, performing some other utility function as well. We'll talk about that in detail. So in general, what we're going to cover today, we're going to install this uh, this little solution. We're going to use the packaged installer that uh, Metalogix puts in the installation files for you. We're going to locate and identify the correct installation files. We're going to move those over to the machines that we need to run it on and we're going to run that installation from that context. But we're also going to talk about some alternative methods of installation, i.e. running an install through PowerShell and STSM. We're going to basically glaze over these two uh, topics because this is kind of at the top level. It's just a matter of, you know, how to how to install solutions using PowerShell, which is more of a, a higher level discussion in general. So without further ado and without any more slides, I'm going to go ahead and switch us over to the environment where we're working, so pardon all my screens here. So here we have Diagnostic Manager. Um, this is a, an installation that covers a couple of different farms. We're going to be focusing on the farm named 2013A here, SharePoint 2013A. And uh, here we can see everything's working. You know, I've got some metrics coming back. All is fine and dandy. I've got a monitored page. Um, from one of my web apps. I'm definitely getting load time back for about 152 milliseconds, but I want to see additional information about that load time from that page. I want to see stuff about specifically how the web parts are, are, are um, performing. You know, what, what if, if, if this time were high, what specific components are contributing to that high load time? So that's the kind of information I want to get. And if I go into my edit parameters for this monitored page, I can opt to collect page component analysis data, right? Now, if you notice in parentheses here, it says requires installation of the component analysis solution. Um, I'm going to leave it collecting every hour, but let's go ahead and enable that. And right off the bat, we should see, and let me just hit another collection real quick. We should get an alert momentarily letting us know that, hey, this, uh, this solution isn't deployed right? And that's accurate in this case. So we're going to want to go run that installation. So if I go to my active alerts here, we can see now I've got an alert, a critical alert telling me that the component analysis solution is not installed. By the way, everyone, you can certainly suppress that alert if you want, but I recommend leaving it because it is good to see this if there is anything wrong with your solution. And we'll talk about potential pitfalls uh, during the installation, but okay, so we know we want to get the the component data. We know we don't have the uh, analysis solution installed, so let's go install it. So the first step is identify how we're going to go about installing it. So let's just assume that I plan to install it using the prepackaged Metalogix installer for the component analysis solution, and that can be identified and located at. Well, let's just drill there. C Program Files x86, Metalogix, Diagnostic Manager, Component Analysis. 
This is on the machine hosting the collection service where you installed the tool. Okay, so in that component analysis directory, we see that we have some options here, several different installation files, executables with their uh, associated configurations, one for each of the supported versions of SharePoint. Additionally, you'll see that we have some raw WSP files here, uh, also one for each of the supported versions of SharePoint, and we're going to leverage those a little bit later, but for now, we're going to use this guy to install to our farm. So our farm is SharePoint 2013A. Now, as you can see, we're remotely connecting to that because I've got this tool installed on 2010A, my application host, but I need to install that uh, solution to the web app in the 2013A farm, which happens to be called 2013A, so it's this machine, right? So I want it to be installed specifically for this one, but I'm actually going to install it across the board for all. But the point is, this is the WFE, this is the machine that I want to install that solution on. So I need to make this installation file available on that machine. So what I do is I just copy this entire directory, component analysis, because of course we do want the uh, associated uh, relevant files that go with that executable. I just copy this entire directory and I literally just paste it or move it or however you go about it to the um, WFE machine. So in this case I've placed it in a similarly uh, uh, similarly structured path. So I'm, I've placed it at C, Program Files x86, Metalogics, Component Analysis, RAW. Since there isn't any diagnostic manager um, agent of any sort, uh, you know, it will be a raw directory, so I can put it literally wherever I want. I can put it directly on C if I want. I just wanted to make it easy for me to find it later in case I forget. So component analysis is there. As you can see, I've pulled over all the relevant files. So since my installation is, a, is an installation of SharePoint 2013, I'm going to run the 2013 installer. And this is pretty no-brainer here, guys. Just run as administrator, and we'll see a fun little CodePlex uh, install package. It's going to go through some... Um, checks to make sure I have what it takes to do it. Specifically, do I have permission to install solutions? Am I logged in as a farm admin essentially, right? So you're not going to be able to, you know, play with solutions unless you're a farm admin. This is an administrative task. Uh, beyond that, is this machine um, hosting SharePoint 3 other or higher? Do I have permission? Uh, is the services administration service started, et cetera, et cetera. Is the timer service started? So on and so forth. It found the solution file it's going to be using, and it confirmed that the, it isn't already installed. So all my checks are successful. I'm just going to click Next, accept some terms and agreements that I won't read, as is the norm, I believe. Um, yeah, so here it goes over. So this installer, by default, and as it should, just deploys everywhere from central admin web app to all your different content web apps. And that's what you want with the um, component analysis solution in general. Now, if, if you have a web app that can't receive this for whatever reason, and it's a known thing, we're not going to want to use this uh, tool. We're going to want to deploy this solution manually, and we'll, we'll look at that in some detail in just a moment. But for now, we're taking this at the highest level, and we're, we know that we're going to put it everywhere, so we just click Next. And then it's going to hum through some uh, progress bar. We're going to watch some green paint dry, so to speak. Uh, right now, we're waiting for the solution deployment job to complete, so we created that job for the timer to take it off, and now the timer's doing it. This is the equivalent, if you're familiar with um, installing solutions, of that part of the process where you just keep refreshing the solutions page waiting for the deployment to complete, right? So this should take some time and it depending on, honestly, usually this takes a good two, maybe three minutes to complete. This is normal for solution deployments in my experience. Uh, so here in a minute we should see this guy complete. Right, great, perfect. Successfully completed. So we're going to click Next. There's our log successfully deployed. This is coming straight out of SharePoint. And close. So now, if I were to go to Central Administration, System Settings, uh, Manage Farm Solutions, and forgive my environment for being as pokey and slow as he is, Oh, 
Expo. When we get to Farm Solutions, we're going to see that solution deployed. Um, just got to wait for this guy to respond. Incidentally, behind the scenes, so all it did was literally push out this WSP the same way um, that you'll see we'll do it here in a minute via manual methods. So if I manage farm solutions, we should now see Metalogic's Diagnostic Manager Component Analysis 2013.WSP is deployed globally to the following web, uh, web apps. And this is what bubbled up in our log in the CodePlex installer. So that's that. At this point, I can go back to my tool, and I should be able to re-attempt that collection. And once it completes, I should see those uh, those bits come through. Yeah. There we go. So now when I go to my uh, component analysis graph, I can see relevant information about the controls, web parts, and HTML controls that may or may not be contributing to, to overall um, s slow render times for the page. Now, obviously, in my case, you know, nothing's performing too badly, but, um, right, if we look at our uh, um, alerts, however, so since I have my thresholds configured to raise over certain values, uh, I'm satisfying those values, right? So I do have critical alerts. Obviously, that's th these are out-of-the-box values, so you can massage these to, to what is right for your environment. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, I wanted to make sure that they did have alerts, so right. So things are working as we expect then. So um, that said, Let's go ahead and retract that solution while we've got a couple minutes. and Or actually, we don't have to retract. Let's just go over options to roll out the solution via manual means. So let's say that I don't want to, uh, for instance, deploy this across the board. Or maybe I don't want to use this uh, uh, silly little installer. Or maybe the installer had problems and you couldn't get it across the wire. Or whatever the case may be, you know what you're doing. You want to use PowerShell or in the case of maybe some old schoolers use STS-ADM to push out these solutions, right? So pretty simple stuff. Uh, this should be kind of part and parcel to anyone who's familiar with using PowerShell to install solutions. We're just going to run our Windows PowerShell um, uh, shell here, uh, the SharePoint management shell. And the scripts for running solutions come in two, two sections of the process, right? So first and foremost, you have to add the um, add the solution to the solution store so that it's available to be deployed. And that looks like, um, well, nope, of course he won't let me do that. Why can't I right click? Well, I'll just type it out. That looks like this. And then to the location of mine, which in my, my case, it's a really, really long path because I don't do things right. And then the name of the WSP that we're going to be pushing out. Again, this might be redundant information for many of you, but I just wanted to include it to be thorough, right? So 
So right, so this uh, this statement should, um, of course, this statement should add the WSP in question to the so-called solution store to make it available to SharePoint to deploy, right? Uh, of course, that's been done, so I won't I won't run it. But once the solution is in the solution store, it's simply a matter of um, installing it, and there is a, another command specifically for that, and that's this install SP solution dash identity. The identity of the WSP file itself, now that it's in the solution store, it'll be recognized. And then I've opted to dash all web applications. So alternatively, you can uh, dash web application space, the specific web application to which you want to deploy. Again, there's plenty of information on the, on the web on running these guys uh, via PowerShell. The last thing I want to show though real quick, the same exact concept can be done from the older STS ADM uh, command line uh, methodology if you still are better comfortable with that. And STS ADM by the way is by default available straight out of um, uh, uh, Windows, Power, uh, Windows Management Shell if you have things set up accurately for your um, location here, right? So I'm defaulting to System32, but often Windows Shell might, may default to the Hive. At any rate, if you navigate to the Hive, you'll have SDSM, SDS uh, ADM available to you. And then this will do the same exact thing that that add solution did, right? It's just going to add that uh, particular file to the solution store to make it available to um, deploy via Oops. Let's see here. There we go. Right, and then this is obviously the same as the other PowerShell. So we're deploying the solution, identifying the WSP that we're deploying, and then what specific um, web apps we send it to. The difference in nomenclature here is they refer to them as content URLs or specific URLs rather than um, web applications. But that's basically it in a nutshell. Again, most of that is probably already known to anyone who's familiar with um, solution management in SharePoint. So that puts us at about the 19-minute mark. So if there's any specific questions anyone has, uh, feel free to raise your hand and type them out to me, and I'll be happy to answer if I can. Uh, while I'm waiting on that, so the component analysis solution uh performs a couple of functions. Primarily, obviously, is this um, deep dive information about your, your monitored pages. But additionally, the component analysis solution installation is what powers our ability to render um, ULS logs. So if you're having issues with ULS and you don't see anything in ULS, consider the, cap the possibility that you don't yet have that component analysis solution installed because it is what powers the ULS. Uh, so, fantastic question from Jeff. When you install the solution, does it take down your farm during the install? The answer is no, but since it is a global um, deployment, i.e. deployed to central admins web app as well, when you retract, if you retract that solution from that central admin URL, then it will indeed enforce a, an IIS reset. So, if you plan to retract these solutions, uh, be sure to do that part uh, during quiet time. And again, that's that's normal. Um, you know, that's that's solution management 101 essentially, right? So when you when you add to the central admin web app, whenever you remove from there, you're going to have to refresh IIS. So that's that's going to be the same for any solution that gets deployed to the central admin web application. Um, but yeah, so if you see inf uh, issues with ULS, for instance, as as I, I am right here, I'm not getting any. Um, information here. So now I think I've actually got other ULS problems in my particular environment, so I won't go too deep into this, but uh, the first uh, phase of troubleshooting is obviously to make sure that Health Analyzer is um, configured correctly to allow us, and all that's covered in the doc, but then primarily one of those uh, one of those steps is ensure that the component analysis solution is deployed because that solution governs this functionality. Nothing will come until we have the component analysis solution to allow us to interface with SharePoint in that manner to get those ULS logs back. Uh, Roger has a question about the ULS logging. Um, 
finds it useful, but it's not possible to search in the messages text. Why? Uh, well, you should be able to search the text for the logs. If it's not rendering for you, then there may be some issue that I'm not aware of. And if that's the case, I'll have to do some testing on my side. But I was, but we should be able to text search those logs uh, whenever they're rendered here. Uh, Jeff asks, what ports does it use between the management server and the SharePoint servers? Uh, that's a tricky question. That's not an easy one to answer because most of what we're doing is collecting via WMI remotely. So by nature of that, the answer is we're using whatever ports WMI is configured to use. I think it uses, I think it assigns ports dynamically. I, I forget what the, the default uh, main port is, something like 151 or some, some strange esoteric port number like that. But again, a quick Google search on WMI ports uh, will give you the answer to that question. Again, we do standard remote WMI calls for all this performance collection, so we're going to use whatever ports um, WMI uses. Similar to how if we were doing SQL calls, SQL queries, what port do you use to make a SQL query? Well, you use whatever port SQL Server is configured to use. By default, that's typically 1433, 1444, but that's a, a SQL Server configuration question, right? Same is true for WMI remote connection. So whatever WMI is configured to use port-wise, that's what we're using. Um, yep, yeah. slightly off the rails, but you know, all, all, all good, all questions welcome. So does that make sense on the ULS thing? So Roger, in, in better detail toward you, um, yeah, I mean, if there's an issue there, we'll definitely look into it, maybe raise a support case, but you should absolutely be able to search those uh, logs from this field. The other thing to mention, I guess, is on the subject of ULS, and ULS is worthy of a topic of discussion, and probably my next Diagnostic Manager quick take will definitely be on the subject of ULS, but you know, there's a lot of configuration. For those of you who aren't seeing ULS, um, entries in this view, there's quite a few uh, configurations that need to be set up on the SharePoint farm itself. Uh, it's possible that you may not even have logging enabled there. A lot of people don't necessarily use it out of the box. So I just remind everyone to review those uh, instructions for configuration from the Diagnostic Manager documentation. Um, yeah, and so I think that's probably going to put us at the conclusion mark. So if there's any other straight questions while we have a couple more minutes, and if not, I think we're okay to adjourn. And obviously, if there are additional questions subsequent to our meeting, um, you can always email us directly at support, go to the support portal, open up cases, or give us a call directly, 202-609-9100. Support lines are always open. You know, it's 24-7, no walls. So just let us know when you have questions, and we're happy to open cases and get on meetings and see what we can figure out. Uh, Diagnostic Manager is a cool tool. I hope that you all agree with that. Uh, there's plenty of power here, plenty of uh, versatility. I'm very anxious and, and happy to help people get the most out of this tool. So just let us know if you have any questions, feedback, uh, requests, you know, feature requests and the like. Uh, all that information is helpful. So with that, I will thank you all for joining. And if you have any follow-up, feel free to let us know. Take care.